Hi everyone, welcome to Shalhoub Tube Podcast. I'm Joanne Basul. I'm the program lead for Ibtikar, which is our internal innovation lab. I'm joined today by my amazing colleagues, Heidi and Fuad. Hi guys. Hey, Hi. how are you? I'm loving the podcast voice, Joanne. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> so professional. <laughs> Do you want to present yourself? Yes, my name is Heidi. I am the founder and CEO of online styling company Wear That. I love Wear That, by the way. Thank you. You're a great client. <laughs> nice. Hi, uh, I'm Fuad Ali. Um, I'm the VM guy. I've been here for 10 years and um, I'm part of this podcast. You're Welcome, the- Fuad. <laughs> you are an amazing VM guy. Thank you. Yes. To give credit where credit is due. Thank you. So I'm very happy about today's session. Uh, it's a subject that we started speaking and hearing more and more of since our group's transformation. And our session today is about normalizing failure to power through innovation, right? It's, uh, we all know that today with the ever-changing environment that we're in, the consumer needs keep on changing. The only way for us to have a future proof or to be future proof is actually through innovation. So, why, what don't you, why don't you guys just tell us a little bit more about how do you see innovation? What does it mean to you? All right. I think uh, innovation for me is, is about creating a value into an idea. That's so true. Yeah. And also from my side as well, I think innovation is, I think there's a misconception where people are like, oh, I need to go out and I need to innovate. I need to build this whole brand new thing that doesn't exist. But innovation could be just the smallest step that you take in a process yeah. to make it better. That's true. And that is, I think people kind of go from zero to a hundred when they think of innovation because they're like, well, I don't have a big idea. I don't have a business idea, but it's like, it's not that. It's just what can you innovate in one, the role that you're in now in your daily life to make something easier for yourself or someone else. hundred percent. And I think when you start with a problem instead of an idea, this makes it much easier for you to understand what innovation is all about. It's And going back to a podcast that our colleagues had recorded previously, innovation is you start with a problem that you face every day. And the fact that you're trying to find a solution for it, you're automatically innovating, right? Whether you succeed or not, it's not the case of innovation. It's the mindset that you put yourself in. I want to find a solution for that problem that I'm facing. Big solution or even small solution, it doesn't really matter as long as you're innovating. I think the word itself is is so high tech and, mm. and we take it it's so seriously. Sexy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more of you solve a problem in a day to day in your life and you don't need to be creative to be able to innovate. I think in any field you're in, you can do a little bit of change the way you do things and that's innovation and the whole process towards achieving whatever is the problem that you're trying to solve is 100%. the innovation. Yeah, exactly. And I think part of innovation, people think that it's an idea stage, right? So, and they stop there. Innovation is taking action, is really moving forward with whatever we had in mind and putting it into action. And this is where people block the first step. It's the most difficult one to take because we're we are really afraid of failing. And I'm sure that um, you guys have faced that before. What is your take on failure when it comes to innovation? I truly believe failure is a mindset. I really, truly believe that. And I think that when you fail, it's not failing because when do you ever look back in your life and say, oh, that was like the worst failure that could have happened. You don't, you look back and say, that didn't go to plan. I went off course, but you know what? Something come out of it and changed for the better most of the time, right? Um, So I think when it comes to failure, I look at it as, you know, you take a step How is it going to go? If it doesn't go to plan, you just switch gears, you change a little bit, and then something else will come from it. And I think that's the way you grow rather than just looking at it being like, I can't do it because I'm going to fail. It's like, well, okay, just stay doing what you're doing then. Absolutely. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) You're right. To be a little bit blunt. (laughs) No, but I I absolutely agree with you. I think think we we use the word failure, but it's, it's again, in a creative process, we don't say... um, it's fail. It's just a process to get into something better. So you've done something and then you, 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 it's the point where you need to change a course to get it even better. So it's not failing. It's, it's more of 
you assessing the risk and, and whatever you reach in and then to the next step, I think. And sometimes uh, yeah. some of the best things come from, like I know in our business, some of the best ideas and some of the best growth opportunities have come from when we have quote unquote failed, yep. um, which is not, again, it's not failing, but it's just, it's a great thing to happen. And I think it should almost be also encouraged to an extent in kind of um, like a what is like a constructive way where you fail because you learn when you learn yeah. you grow when you grow you do something better and when you fail big you like if you dream big and fail big then you don't know what's going to come out from it I think it's it's just it purely is a mindset and one of the tactics I do when I like if I have a big decision that I need to make I look at um a scale and I say okay what is the worst that can happen to me in this situation so when I started my business like what is the worst thing that can happen it fails it doesn't work it you know I'm I'm a loser you know all of these yeah. things and what is the best that can happen well it could be a roaring success we can change women's lives we can make this like a huge thing for empowering women and what outweighs what you know the yeah. the success always outweighs the reason not to start something i think that's that's absolutely right just to add on top of what you said nobody counts how many times you fail by the way oh yeah totally People no one cares except in the success one. yeah <laughs> so it's by yourself one second nobody really cares no one cares about you except you. Yeah. Like no one actually it's, cares. It's, 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 and, <laughs> and what's the worst thing can happen to you is embarrassing yourself something i don't know just just and go not ahead even and try the case. I mean, yeah, yeah exactly it, i mean if 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 it if it involve uh money whatever you're experimenting or if involve other people's life then you will have to experiment carefully because this is this is something that changes but if you're experimenting an idea i think go ahead and do it because otherwise it become those one of those idea that i mean you can write ideas on the on the internet Tons of it will come that never happen anything, and few of them that actually came through. Yeah. And we, we we looked at it and we think uh, these are life changing, and I can't believe we have this. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think that with innovation, we're always going towards something that we don't know. So putting a plan, we know in advance that this plan might not be achieved in that way, right? Because we're going in a direction that's very new to us. Even if we have benchmarks or we look at other companies or other people, how they're doing it, we still are not sure of what the outcome could be because it's something completely new for us. So we need to allow this room of things not going according to plan, which is exactly what you're saying. And I feel like between the three of us, I'm sure that we're not expert, but we still have faced failures. I'm not going to call them failures anymore, but really say that we things didn't go according to our plans. And at the same time, I'm sure that in our day to day life or even when we want to take decisions, we were, we feel as well that we don't want to take the step forward because we are scared of things not happening well or not going as planned. So what would you guys recommend as steps to take uh, when people are actually feeling these fears, what should they do? Uh, what steps can they take forward to push them and encourage them to move forward? Well, one, oh, sorry. No, one. no, because yours is very serious. You own a business. <laughs> I'm going to make it easier for the people who don't own a business. Uh, talk to people. Genuinely, talk to, talk to people. You never know where you're going to get the best ideas, first of all. You never know what kind of advice you're going to get from people. One. By just saying it, it's off your shoulder and that's one step. Yeah. Because if you have it in your head and you're processing it, it will always be there and it's blocking other other solutions you might be thinking. That's one. Second, go around make friends from smart people. We have a lot of them in the building. Yeah. <laughs> in building ten and eleven and the greenhouse yeah, yeah, and just, all the just, other buildings just, we have. Yeah. And <laughs> and and that's one. And and people who own a business, you can go and ask them. Well, I think one thing that people have to remember is like when you look at failure and you look at kind of the emotions attached to it in a really practical sense and you say, right, this is the worst that can happen, but is that really going to ever happen? No, it's not. That's just the narrative I've built up in my head. So once you kind of separate the narrative with the reality of what's in front of you, it's much easier to take a step. And I think that you just need to from starting a business you just need to start because you don't know what and even now like we start a project and I can I can almost guarantee that 
nine times out of 10, it's not where it's meant to be by the end. It's like gone off track 10 million different times. It's taken 10 million different directions. But at the end, the outcome is always, it's probably always almost better because you've changed along the way to, to make it what it needs to be. And I think that you just need to kind of look at it in a really practical sense rather than an emotive sense. Yeah. And I think even for us in Iptikar, we, we work with a lot of Iptikarians who have these huge, big visions. And this is exactly what we want, right? People to dream really big. But what, what happens sometimes is that this dream is so big that it can scare them and seem so far-fetched. So what we do with them is we actually break it down into milestones and like smaller road, like a long roadmap that we actually do in steps. And when we break it down, the first step is much more attainable, right? Because we actually put tangible things that they can do. And when they hit the first step, the second step becomes easier. And then the third step becomes easier. And they see themselves going all the way to step six, step 10, step 15, and achieving being closer and closer to their big vision. And I think one of the things anyone could do is break it down right. into small milestones. And that would make it much easier to see and much closer to attain, right, the first step. But that's like anything. You're not going to go out and run an ultra marathon without training, right? You're going to go and run a 5K, then a 10K, she then runs, a 20K. By the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, no. She runs it's and she hides. And, and, and stuff. the yeah. first ultra I did, I failed. I didn't finish and I trained for months. And I you know what? To I was the okay. Video you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but sitting. it's the same in business. And what they do in Iptika, we do exactly in our business where people like and also you think about the capacity of people you can't expect people to deliver on a year long vision every single day no they can deliver on the short well, steps in yeah. front of them so we do like two week sprints and we're like all we need you to do is deliver on this by the end of two weeks and we'll reassess in the next two weeks but know that at the end of the month at the end of six months at the end of the year this is the goal yes and I think coming back to what you said, Fuad, one of the things that that we advise people is to take it up with mentors, people that they trust, whether it's it's their colleagues or even their managers or people who are in the departments who have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge, just to go sit with them and let, let them coach them and help them yeah. and mentor them and guide them. Because it's always easier, like you said, to say it out loud and really see how people respond to it. And when things seem too big for us and too scary, people will actually tell us, oh, this sounds amazing. I'm sure you can do it because I heard that this other company is doing something similar. And the more we take on feedback from people, the more it it feels tangible that right, it's something right. we can achieve. Use the fear. Uh, it, it's, 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 if the idea scares you, that means there's something in there, right? And then the second one is if, 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 if you take that idea and, and see a roadmap where to get there, that's innovation. And f potentially we all are the future startup or the, the future whatever is entrepreneur. And you just have to start somewhere. I think what you're trying to say is there's an entrepreneurial spirit in all of us. Absolutely. We just need to yeah. take the it's first just, step. It's just you need to do the idea and then the whole innovation process and then start somewhere and exactly. eventually go somewhere. I think innovation doesn't sit only at the greenhouse. Innovation sits everywhere in the whole organization and in every single person sitting in that organization. It's just within us, it's a mindset. And the more we talk about it and the more we share ideas and we collaborate together, the more we can get ahead in, in the game. Uh, Heidi, I want to hear a little bit from you as well in terms of what kind of example or some case studies that you have, for example, that you can give for our listeners today about how you do it in the core of where that. <laughs> I'm laughing, I'm lolling because, <laughs> I mean, where do I begin? <laughs> please tell us, please tell us more. I think that um, when you, and I'm guilty of this as well, because when you look at other businesses, you go, gosh, they're like, they're so organized, they're so glossy, like everything just goes according to plan. And then when you talk to people in it or you get into it, they're like, oh my God, like this goes wrong and these problems won't even matter anymore because as you grow, the problems will get bigger and all this sort of stuff. So I think that every single day we expect, and I've become really good at knowing that things will go wrong. Like... For example, if I give you just literally at 10 o'clock last night, I got an email from the state saying, hi, we didn't process three of your um, orders. So all the stock is being canceled. So, I mean, so what do you do? Oh, now I have to go find alternatives, right? But it's like, 
it is what it is. I'm not going to like... So can you tell us of a time, for example, during your startup, um, when you were setting up your startup, where you feel like things didn't go as planned, maybe during COVID, and how did you actually use it, and use the learnings that you, you had from this time to do things better and turn them into a success? Yeah, I think COVID was a great example because I was sitting in my house and I was like, they, they said you have like an hour to before all the offices go into lockdown. So I was scrambling, getting all the stocks. So then my house become a warehouse and I was like, oh gosh, like, how are we going to do this? And it's a lot of dress up. It was crazy. But you know what we did? We had this crazy system between houses. So we actually set up essentially a warehouse between houses in every house in every so every team member had a different so mine house was like picking and packing and then someone else's house was receiving and like so we we basically built a system that was really cool that we then brought back to our the rest of us we were watching netflix yeah yeah (laughs) and another thing was like you know, such a big thing for us was the customer changed and they were really scared and there was a big, like, um, a fear around, you know, no one knew what was going on. And I think the one thing we did, and I'm really glad we did, was we didn't, we just listened to our customers. We, we tried to understand what they wanted. We didn't force anything. We didn't push anything. We just kind of chilled because we wanted to know, like, what is it they want from us? And we, we moved in a real different direction. We worked a lot with them on content. We we kind of, instead of sending boxes, we focused on giving them entertainment and building our brand and building um, kind of like our relationship with our customers, which was kind of a really interesting way of doing it during such a unique experience. Interesting. Because we could have yeah. just gone, oh gosh, all right, let's close. Of because course. we yeah. can't do anything, but sure we didn't. there is a lot of business who have done that. For sure. I mean, yeah, I don't know, but... um. Yeah, it was crazy, my God. So I think uh, in a nutshell, we can say that one, innovation is about baby steps that we can take towards out of our comfort zone, actually towards something completely new, completely different, that actually is okay that it scares us as long as we're taking calculated risk, as long as we are splitting down into milestones, we surround ourselves with people we trust, with some mentors, and we keep collaborating with the right people this is the best way for us to keep going forward. And we should eliminate from our dictionary the word failure, just like you were saying. We we do some checkpoints as we go. If things are not going according to plan, we understand what happened and we pivot. We we analyze the situation and we take the right corrective actions uh, based on that, based on the analysis and the outcomes that we that we got. Um, any last words for our listeners today? I just came for the snacks. <laughs> Where are the tic the tic tac? <laughs> That's it, guys. No, I mean just start. I think the final word is just start, um, because what's the worst that can happen? You learn something and you grow, and it's something more than what you were doing before. And I think that if people just did that, then who knows what can come from it? And I, I, I think innovation or or an idea is not like a cartoon movie, uh, like Bob. I think it's a process. It's whatever it is, just just start rolling and and, and, and you see what it takes you. Yeah, I 100% agree with you guys. Thank you so much for your closing note. Thank you guys for being here. This was such a nice podcast. And I really hope that based on your experiences and your feedback, people will take it and will actually get inspired and get the courage to become more innovative and really take that first step and hopefully apply to Iptikar. <laughs> Look at that podcast the little voice. little plug at the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I brought it back. Follow me. <laughs> All right. Literally. So the next steps as an entrepreneur is definitely embrace the challenge, embrace the failure, be okay with that happening and what you can learn from it and how you can grow your business from these challenges and failures. Uh, stay tuned for more on this subject in upcoming episodes.